here's how you can absolutely master the camera app on the iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max. Okay, well, here we are. This is my brand new iPhone 13 Pro. Let's take a look at some of the ways that you can master the camera app. Starting off with the volume buttons. Many people probably don't know this, but the volume buttons can actually be used as a physical shutter. So if you're looking at this picture right now, I just go ahead and click with that top button and I've captured a photo. Even more, I can click and hold and start recording a video. And it's gonna record this video until I release that shutter button. If we go ahead and jump into settings, I'll rotate my phone back over, jump back here to the settings application and go to camera, I can change that volume button. So now volume up, instead of doing video, it can do burst. So now going back to the camera app, clicking and holding that top one, we'll start shooting burst photos instead. And the bottom one, if you click and hold, will start doing video. Now let's talk about camera scope. And that is these three things here at the bottom. These are your optical zoom levels that correspond to the three cameras that are located on the back of the phone. On iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max, you have three options. You have 0.5, which is your ultra wide angle lens. You have one time zoom, just your standard lens. Then you have three time zoom, which is that tele lens. But you can also zoom in further. You could pinch on the screen and move in like that, but it's a little unwieldy and hard to do. So instead, you can go to the numbers at the bottom and slide with your finger. I can now zoom all up to 15x optical zoom, or I can get very granular in exactly how much I want to zoom in. You can go all the way out and all the way in. It's very easy to jump between. Uh, say you're here too, you can swipe down the wheel to put it away and just tap on any of those numbers to jump back between the presets once more. Before we go any further, I need to take a moment just to talk about these guys. These are the new Anchor 511 charger, also known as the Nano Pro. Not to drag Apple, but the new Anchor Nano Pro is pretty much the same size as Apple's 5 watt USB-A charger. And it's much smaller than Apple's own USB-C 20 watt charger. It's three times faster than Apple's wireless charger, and yet, it is still 50% smaller than Apple's 20 watt charger. These can charge the latest iPhone 13 and 13 Pro from zero to 50% in just 26 minutes. And it'll do the same thing for the iPhone 12 or the iPhone 12 Pro. These also have a lot of built-in protections with Active Shield safety systems. It monitors your charging the entire time and provides continuous temperature control and output control so that everything you're using is safe. So yeah, these things are incredibly tiny, they're incredibly fast and they come in four different colors, Arctic white and glacier blue, which are the two that I have here, but they also come in a black ice and a cool lavender color as well. So if you want to pick these things up, they are only $20. And of course I've got links for them down below in the description, charge it fast, make it last. I'm not sure I could even think of a better accessory for your new iPhone 13 pro. Apple still doesn't include a charger in the box. This is USB-C and supports fast charging. And of course that glacier blue almost perfectly matches Apple's new Sierra blue colorway for the iPhone 13 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Grab one now for less than $20 and let me know what you think down below in the comments. At the top of the phone here, you'll notice this tiny little up carrot. You can use that to open up more options for your camera. So if I go ahead and tap on this, a little tray will appear down below the zoom levels. And you can see I can control multiple aspects of the phone. Some I can control outside of it, like the live photo icon up here, as well as within this little dock. But I have more options here in the controls, like leaving on auto, on, or off. Other ones are like flash. I can turn flash on auto, on, or off. Or I can control flash right from here. So just depending on what you want to do, this is a really quick way to turn off the flash or live photos, but if you want more controls, you can get to them by opening up that little tray or dock of additional controls. This is where you're also going to find more settings, like being able to turn on timers for three or 10 seconds, 
We have access to the exposure compensation. I can brighten or lower the exposure. And we have aspect ratios. You can choose between a four by three ratio, kind of a standard photo, 16 by nine, which is nice for landscape photos, which kind of lines up with a, a video resolution there. And the third option is putting it into square or one by one, which is perfect for social media like Instagram. The last control that I want to show down here is this new one here, which looks like a bunch of layers. These are photographic styles, and this is a new feature for iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. You can choose between standard, rich contrast, vibrant, warm, and cool. These are set here inside of the camera app, and they are applied when you capture a photo versus a filter, which is applied after you've taken the photo. A filter applies over the entire image, whereas these photographic styles are applied when you take the photo itself. And it actually applies to different amounts of the photo, so it can pull out different parts. It's more intelligent than a filter. Plus, you can tune these to your exact liking. I can adjust the tone all the way down from a negative 100 to 100, and I can control the warmth as well from negative 100 to 100. So you can choose your exact style you want and then tune it to your preference. So aside from doing it here in the camera app, if we go back to our camera settings, there is an option for photographic styles and you can actually see examples of what these look like here instead of through the camera. So if you're sitting at home, you're debating which one, you can look through these samples here and then choose the one that you like most. Jumping back into the camera app, most people probably know how to switch different modes of the camera. We're in photo mode now, but you can click here to go to portrait mode or here to go to panoramas. For portrait mode, a couple things that I wanna to touch on. So say we're taking our portrait mode photo here, you can of course turn your flash on and off. You can adjust your aperture, which is how much blur there is in the background. You can increase or decrease how much bokeh there is. And on the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max, you can change how much zoom. So if you wanna go wider or closer, you can choose between the uh, standard wide angle lens and the three times zoom optical tele lens control your aperture as well there. Um, then you can choose your photographic, not photographic styles, you can portrait lighting between the several presets and these can also be adjusted after the fact as well. Once you've taken a portrait mode photo, you can remove the portrait mode effect as well as at any of these portrait lighting options. Let's look at night mode. If we go back over to photo and I try to make our lens a little darker here, we're gonna try to trick it. As you can see, there's a little moon icon in the upper left hand corner. We've tricked it into turning on night mode. So if I tap on that, I can bring up my night mode settings there at the bottom and I can adjust how long the shutter stays open. If the camera is stable, it'll give you a longer option for how long the shutter stays open, such as if it's on a tripod. If you're shooting handheld, it's gonna lower that shutter speed because it doesn't want you moving while it's taking the photo. While you're taking a night mode shot, you do need to make sure you are very still. You can also do night mode time lapses and night mode portraits in the respective modes. Another new feature of the iPhone 13 and iPhone 13 Pro Max is macro mode. Fortunately, you don't have to do anything to enable macro mode. You just take your iPhone and move within only a couple centimeters of your subject and you can capture amazing macro photography like on our succulent here. Before jumping to video, I wanna talk about raw photos. You can enable or disable raw photos right here at the top of the camera app, but it can be done in the camera settings as well. If we go to format, I do have this option for Apple Pro Raw. Capturing an Apple Pro Raw captures a higher resolution photograph that retains as much information as possible as a 12-bit file uh, that uses the linear DNG format for more information and dynamic range. If you're really a pro photographer, you may want to be able to turn this on and you can do so here from within settings. Now, right now, Apple does not have ProRes enabled on the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max. That will be coming very soon though. And it is similar to Apple Pro Raw, but applies to video. You'll likely be able to enable it here within formats or when you're looking at record video, which is also where you can turn off or turn on Dolby Vision HDR. In video, many of the same controls apply. You can jump between 0.5, one, and three times zoom. But I do wanna notice this trick here. If we start recording in one time zoom, 
you're limited. You can only go up to three times zoom, 77 millimeter equivalent. But if we stop and you zoom in a little bit further, it'll actually switch to the optical lens. Now when we're recording, we can go all the way up to nine times optical or digital zoom and all the way back to three times optical zoom. So you can do that, but then you can't zoom any further out. You can't go to one or 0.5 times optical zoom. So just know that when you're looking at recording a video, if you're gonna to wanna to zoom in, zoom in more first or keep it wide because you're going to be limited in what you can record in either of the two modes. The other mode we have here that's brand new for the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max is cinematic mode. You can already see it applied here where it's blurring out the background of our little VW bus here. We can move this around and it is blurring out the background similar to portrait mode, but for video. Once we stop recording, we can pull up our video that we recorded and we have the options to edit it just like we would a photo. So I can turn cinematic mode on or off after I've captured it. You can see the blur changing in the background when it's on or off. When it is on, I can adjust my bokeh in the background, more or less background blur, depending on my preference. And you can even change your focus point. So if there was multiple subjects in the frame, they'd be highlighted and you'd be able to tap and adjust where you want the focus point to be. And you can add multiple focus points throughout your video so it can change in your scene. So that is it. That is everything you need to know to be able to take amazing photos and videos with your new iPhone 13 Pro. That's every feature. Let me know what you guys think, which is your favorite down below in the comments or better yet. Find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU.